Word Defibrillator for today, where we look for a word from within the Word. And uh, thank you, Gerard. So here is the Word Defibrillator for today. Now, we go into the Scripture to hopefully find a word from within the Word. And it's going to put us in a place for the day, kickstart our day, into a new beginning. And today's that day that you can start. And this day will be that day. Now, Psalm 84, I'm going to actually go, it's not a long psalm, and it's pretty intense, so I'm going to go through the whole thing. To the chief musician set to Philistine lute, or possibly a particular tune, a psalm of the sons of Korah. How lovely are your tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul yearns, yes, even pines, and is homesick for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out and sing for joy to the, to the living God. Yes, the sparrow has found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied. You recognize that? Yep, that's in the New Testament too. Are those who dwell in your house and your presence, they will be singing your praises all the day long. Selah. Pause and calmly think of that. Blessed and happy, fortunate to be envied is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valley of weeping, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also fills the pools with blessings. They go from strength to strength, increasing in victorious power. Each of them appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah, pause and calmly think of that. Behold our shield, the king as your agent, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a doorkeeper and stand at the threshold in the house of my God than to dwell at ease in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows present grace and favor and future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing would he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, bless happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who trusts in you, leaning and believing on you, committing all and confidently looking to you, and that without fear or misgiving. Wow. Verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun, it's S-U-N, and a shield. He is your light. I wanted to say something this morning where we need to keep this in mind. There are consequences of being part of God's kingdom. There are consequences. If you're going to go swim in a swimming pool, there's consequences of swimming in a swimming pool. And what is that? You're going to get wet. If you're going to go out into the rain, the consequence of going out into the rain is getting wet. If you're going to go outside in the middle of winter and you're not going to put a warm cloth, warm jacket on, the consequences are you're going to get cold. Now, if you're going to spend time in the kingdom of heaven and you want certain blessings upon your life, there are consequences. I mean, wouldn't you want to be blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied? Well, you've got to dwell in the house of the Lord. And you've got to spend time in his presence. And you will end up singing praises all day long. If you want to be blessed, happy, and fortunate, is you need to put your strength in God. You have to. And if you want to be envied and be blessed and you want to be in that space where people look upon you and they're going to be envying you for what you have, well, you have to trust in leaning and believing on God and committing all that you are to Him and confidently looking to Him without fear or misgiving. Those are the consequences. If you're going to come and spend time with God, you're going to have to trust Him. 
If you want the love of God, you're going to have to receive it. You have to cast your burdens. There's a whole lot of things you need to let go of. There's a whole lot of things that you need to give up. You have to change some of the relationships you have. We have to look into the thoughts. The consequences of being in the kingdom of heaven is you have to walk away from your past. You have to understand that it's no longer you that lives, but Christ who lives in you. You have to understand the consequences of spending time in the, he in, in the kingdom. If you want to be blessed, happy and fortunate, well, you're going to have to take every thought captive and hold it submissive to the word of God. You're going to have to renew your mind daily by the word of God. You're going to have to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. If you want the plans that uh, prosper and not to harm, that give you a hope and a future, well, you have to seek his face with all your heart. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit. You have to be led by the Spirit. Because that testifies as to being a child of God. You cannot enter into the courts of praise without consequences of having to change your world. To have to change the way that we think, the way that we do things, the way that we speak to others. Now that's the nice thing. A lot of consequences happen in our life without us even knowing that we are truly set free because who the sun sets free is truly free indeed heavenly father we thank you for the consequences of the kingdom of heaven we thank you father that one of the consequences of the kingdom of heaven is peace the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. That God's our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We thank you for that peace. We thank you, Father, the consequences of trusting in you is amazing miracle signs and wonders. We thank you, Father, that the consequences of loving others is we receive love in return. And we thank you, Father, that the consequences of forgiving others is we receive forgiveness from you. We thank you, Father, that the consequences of prayer is deliverance, is salvation. We thank you, Father, that being your children, giving our lives to Christ, the consequences are your promises and your blessings and your love bestowed upon us, accepting us for who we are and not for who we should be. We thank you, Father, for the consequence of your kingdom that brings us grace and mercy. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that the consequence of your sacrificial love for us on the cross is that we are saved and we have everlasting eternal life in you. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that the kingdom of heaven defending us, fighting our battles on our behalf is a consequence of knowing you. So, Father, we take up our positions. We stand firm. And the consequence of that is we'll watch how the Lord, our God, will deliver us. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.